All right, Ethan, let's go. We'll get going. Uh, hi, I'm Michael Mikowski. I'm uh, the president CEO of Jinsa with me for our weekly uh, update about the, the war in Israel and Gaza in the region. Uh, of course, we have uh, uh, retired uh, Major General uh, Yaakov Armidror, distinguished fellow with Jinsa, former National Security Advisor to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, we only have one of our generals today. Last week we had two. Uh, but obviously, General Amidor is smart enough for three generals. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started. Um, don't 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 tell it that. To, to no, the, no, of course. By the way, uh, <laughs> we had an excellent conversation, even without you, General, last week with General uh, Norkin and General Leish. So just good to have a, a little variety. Um, uh, I want to talk about a few things. Uh, uh, first of all, let's talk about what's been in the news particularly in uh, what's been dominating a lot of the news coverage, which has been the talks uh, for a pause or a ceasefire uh, uh, with Hamas and Israel that would involve, you know, and we're aware, I'm aware that uh, uh, a number of what reports have been, have had things uh, that possibly have been in the uh, negotiations or been in the deal that um, were not true, but basically there have been a range of things. But uh, what we understand from the reporting is, you know, Hamas wanted um, complete ceasefire. Israeli troops to eventually leave Gaza. Um, a lot of prisoners, uh, Palestinian prisoners, release Israel. Of course, is very would do this only any pause, uh, and it would only be a pause from the Israeli perspective. Uh, of course, uh, for the release of the hostages, uh, all the hostages alive and dead. Um, and uh, but Israel obviously has repeatedly said, uh, you know, the, uh, there will have to be a resumption. They're not going to agree to any uh, full ceasefire. So, General, um, let me ask you, what do you make of the breakdown of these talks or the seeming rejection by Hamas? There have been reports of, we don't know if they're true, between uh, a lack of communication or a lack of agreement between Sinwar and Gaza and the Hamas leaders in Qatar. I mean, I don't know what is true or not, but what do you, what's your perspective of what's happened? Um, I I don't know. First of all, good evening and, and thank you for having me here. Um, I don't know the details about the communication between Sinwar and, and the other people on the leadership of Hamas, and I think it's not important. At the end of the day, what we have is a reaction of, of Hamas to an offer which was um, built by the representatives of Qatar, Egypt, um, United States of America, and Israel, and the answer of Hamas is unacceptable, and, and, and the, the answer of Israel is go to Hamas and put pressure on them because we are not going to take um, part in the negotiations that you have with, with Hamas if, if you want in, in Cairo. Um, the, 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 the dream of Hamas that will stop Israel from continuing the war um, is, will, not, will not materialize. We are ready for a pause. We are ready for a long pause. We are ready to, to pay a lot for having the hostages. We know that the powers will be used by the by the uh, Hamas to reorganize itself and to be better prepared for the next stage. We know from experience in the past that we might pay um, in, 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 in life of, of soldiers in the battlefield because Hamas will be better organized, but not in any price. And the, and the, the red line is very clear. Israel is not going to stop the war in Gaza. We will finish it to the end, and we are ready to to do a long pause and, and to finish with the with the hostages uh, issue. For us, it's very um, moral obligation towards the people, their families, and so on and so forth. But there are some red lines that we will not cross, and, and stopping the war is one of them. Of course, retreating from Gaza, it's not in the in the cards at all. You don't hear you. We don't hear you. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, thanks. Um, what do you... Well, I re recognize it's hard to divine the intentions of Hamas, uh, and, and there are different leaders. 
is it surprising to you that uh, what's happened? Or I mean, you would think one could think, given all the pressure that the IDF is putting on Hamas uh, in Gaza and all the terrorists and fighters they've been killing, and based on reports, at least it seems like the Israelis wanted us to know. You know, Sinwar has been on the move. You know, different places. At least I think that's what Defense Minister Gallen has said. You know, one might think he'd be want a, a pause, but what do, what do you think is what does this reflect in your mind? I, I think that, um, and I think that the in in this stage, it's clear to to Sinwar and his people in Gaza that they don't, they don't have too many cards. Um, whenever Israel is is deciding, we are putting the the right uh, um, uh, forces on the ground, and they cannot stop us. They can you know, uh, delay us another day, but at the end, whenever we decide that we will take the area, we are taking the area on the ground and later on under the ground, and they see that we are coming in and in and in and in, and, and they cannot stop us. And the only card that they, they, they have in their hands is are the hostages. And they will they try to use it as much as they can. And of course, from their point of view, the dream is to stop the war ultimately, and, 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 and that will be the end of the war. They can say that, yes, we sacrificed uh, 12,000 uh, members of Hamas, but we won the war. Um, we, we will not let it happen. It is a mistake that we did in the past. Um, people do not understand when say, are you, don't you ready to go to square one before? No, no square one anymore. It's the end of the square. Um, we are not going back, not because we don't, we, 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 there is no back. Uh, Gaza will remain like area A in the, in the West Bank, meaning the IDF will not be inside all the time, but whenever we will have any information, we will go in. We are doing it now in the North. In the North now, we are um, making all the tests which are needed to show ourselves and to Hamas and others that we know how to do it, to make all the raids from outside the Gaza Strip, the, the forces which are making the raids inside the, the center um, of Gaza and the north of Gaza are not in Gaza Strip. Oh. They are outside, inside Israel, and they are moving whenever there is a need. And in Shati, last time that we went in, we went is with a division. Last, um, um, the, the first time that we went in, we, we went with a division. Last time we went is with a battalion. This is the, 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 that what will happen in Gaza in the next year, I think. Slowly, slowly we'll move from one point to another based on the intelligence that we are collecting, based on the intelligence that we have from all the materials which have been captured in the, in the headquarters, based on the interrogation of the Hamas uh, terrorists. Slowly, slowly we will clean Gaza. It will take time. We have the time. After breaking the, the neck of the system, as we did in the north and as we did in the center, and we are now doing it in, in Hanunes, and what remains is only a Rafa. In Rafa, the problem is not the, the, the ability of, of Hamas to stop us or to block us or to delay us. The, the, the problem from our point of view in, 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 in Rafa, as was uh, as, as the Americans are saying, uh, is the population. There are more than a million people there. Yeah. The Egyptians do not let them go in. And we under, I, I not, not the state of Israel, I speak on behalf of myself. I understand the Egyptians. They despise the Palestinians. They are afraid from Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization, branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. They don't want them in, uh, in, in, in Egypt. I mean, from their point of view, we are pushing the enemy into Egypt. So they will not let them come in. We will have to find a solution how to move them from Rafa, either to the center or Muasi or other places, to spread them in areas which had been cleaned before. And then we will have to go to, to move to Rafa and to take Rafa on the ground and under the ground and to neutralize the four battalions that were there, that are there now. And, and that, that will be probably the end of the intensive operation. Now we are with four brigades, more than four brigades in Khan Yunis, moving on the ground and under the ground. It will take another, I don't know, week, two weeks, three weeks. It will be ended like in the north. 
and we will move into Afa. We will move the we will move the people, the, the citizens, which went into the area from other parts of of the of Gaza Strip, and then we will um, do whatever is needed to gain control on the ground and underground in Rafa. And Mawasi, just to clarify, is was set up at the beginning of the war early on as a sort of sanctuary. Is that right? It is it's still, it is still, it's, it is still sanctuary. We don't attack. We don't strike. There were some some attempt to launch missiles into Israel from the Mawasi. We didn't retaliate because we didn't want that civilians will be um, um, harmed by by our reaction. So we we didn't react. Um, and we try, we know that Hamas is confiscating part of the human uh, um, human uh, um, help that we, are, that, we allow, that we allow to bring in food, water, uh, health uh, needs and so on and so forth. Uh, we know that part of it is the Hamas is confiscating, but uh, we let everything to go in. And this is a sanctuary, yes, part of, of that. And probably more people will be moved from... Uh, from uh, um, Rafa into this area. So, I mean, before I ask you a little more about Rafa, about Mawasi, because I don't think it gets enough attention. It was set up early on. Uh, I was told that it's more like sand dunes or something. There's no, there's not much infrastructure there. Is that right? It's like uh, no, it's not infrastructure. It's a tents which had been built by the United Nation uh, um, system, uh, but they, they have food, they have water, uh, they have. Um, Oil, if needed, the healthcare and so on. So it's not, you know, it's not a resort near the Mediterranean. It's it's a it's a refugee camp, no question. Yeah. But but there is no humanitarian um, um, crisis, no femina, no and uh, you know um, diseases and so on and so forth. The, 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 the United States and and we are getting we are giving a lot of help uh, to 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 prevent it. But do you find the way you see a timetable now? I mean, you talk about they got to finish in Khan Yunus. They're already the IDF is operating in Rafa area, right? Um, no, we are we are very cautious in Rafa area. Just by airstrikes, um, the the ground forces are concentrating now in uh, in, in Khan Yunus and around Khan Yunus, with great success, by the way. We found the uh, the underground tunnels, the, the, which had been used. We found millions of shekels uh, that they kept from themselves under the ground. They didn't give the people, but it was kept by for, by the leadership. We found the, the list of, of uh, support of Iranian money going into Sinwar. We can tell you how much money he got in the last uh, few years. Um, how much of that went personally to his accounts and how much were part of the budget of Hamas. I, I don't know. Maybe our people... Uh, have better information about it, but we know the numbers now. What, what, what went from Hamas to Sinwa? The issue with Rafa, I guess, but let me ask you, I mean, which to clarify to folks, so it's on the Egyptian border in the south of Gaza. Yeah. Israel has waited to, right, as you mentioned, I remember General Norkin told us recently, you know, uh, Israel did drop bombs in Rafa before, but why was Israel generally... Uh, only dealing with Rafa, or why are they will only do it now or soon as opposed to earlier on? Because you would think they'd flee south from you know the north to the south. Yes, they, they 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 did, and and at the beginning we want we wanted to 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 um, to have an area with the minimum number of of uh, civilians because we don't want the civilians to be caught in the middle of the battlefield. So it was easy in the north when, I don't know, 80% of the population was moved to the Mwasi in the south. It was more complicated in the center when they, they didn't have too many places to go to and most of them went to, to Rafa. And it will be much more complicated in the, in the future when we will have to move people from Rafa uh, because this is an area with which will be a very extensive uh, Battles between Israel and the IDF. It will be the last uh, resort of the of, of Hamas, and and probably they will fight. So this, you know, initially when the war began, the ground incursion began. I was in Israel, I guess, in early November. We I'd hear 
And the ground incursion, I guess, began at the end of October. And you hear, well, we hope three months, that which took us to the end of January. Now it's already February 8th, and they're not finished with Khan Yunus. And I'm not saying this in a critical way. I'm just saying that the timetable has been pushed back. And we did hear from some folks that it might take longer. So it looks like we might begin in March here before um, the intensive operations in Gaza start to... Well, no, they, 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 we have now only one area in which it is very extensive. It's Iran Khan Yunus. Okay. It's it is different in the north. It's different in the center, yeah. and and only when we finish um, um, uh, Khan Yunis we will move to to Rafa because we want to spread the population. We don't want them to concentrate in Gaza, so it will be ended a little bit later, but much less casualties in our side and much less yeah. casualties on the other side because we are playing with the moving of the of the population because we don't want them to be caught in the middle of the battlefield and it take time. Let me ask you one more thing about this, and then which is the Egyptian issue. There have been some reports, I thought, of, of tension between Israel and Egypt. And you clarified why, of course, Egypt doesn't want Hamas there. On the other hand, there have been criticism, I thought, I mean, it, one assumes or what I thought is happening. How did, I mean, Israel's going to have to do an assessment. How did Hamas get all this material into the Strip? And the assumption, I thought, has been that it must have been through some of the tunnels from Egypt into Rafa. Um, and I thought the Egyptians have denied that, but uh, how do you see the Israeli-Egyptian relations now? And what is your assumptions about, you know, tunnels there? I think that from our point of view and their point of view, there are many issues much more important for both countries in these relations than the issue of uh, um, we and Hamas fighting near the Egyptian border. Um, I understand, as I said, I, unlike many Israelis, understand why the Egyptians don't want them. The reason that we want to kill them is the reason that they don't want them to be in. I mean, they understand who are they. And I think that it was a big mistake in the Israeli side when we spoke about pushing the Palestinians into, into Egypt. I tried to make everyone understand that it will not work. Yeah. This is against all the Egyptians' attitude towards Hamas and the Palestinians. And they, want, they don't want them in. They don't want to be shown as uh, taking part in the new Nakba, uh, helping the Israelis to move them out of Gaza. They don't want to be in this position. And I, I understand them. Even if I don't agree, I understand. I understand their position. And I think that the, the fact that they are afraid uh, to bring in terrorists should be understood by us, that they don't like the Palestinians. We know the Palestinians. We understand why the Egyptians don't like them. Yes. So I, I think that was the mistake. Now I, I hope that we made sure we, we guarantee the Egyptians that we will not push the Palestinians into Egypt. We will move them to other places inside Gaza, and then we will go and 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 take control uh, in Rafah on the ground and other ground. It probably will be another month of uh, of, uh, of uh, intensive operation and which will begin after the operation in Khan Yunus. By the way, isn't it with the Egyptian perspective, it's not just that these are Palestinians, but they look at, I mean, Hamas is essentially the Palestinian chapter of the Muslim Brotherhood. And it's yep. the Muslim Brotherhood, the General Sisi, uh, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood government of Morsi that uh, Sisi removed. And it's the Muslim Brotherhood so, that kills so Sadat. Right? This, is, this is why I understand why the Egyptians don't want to bring into um, Egypt the um, the Palestinians from Gaza. Okay, um, right. Uh, let me ask you: When we talk about tension, um, there's a line here. You know, Secretary of Defense, uh, excuse me, Secretary of State Blinken is in Israel, and he had a quote here. And I'm only giving a small part of the quote, but basically he expressed a lot of understanding, recognizing uh, what Hamas did. I mean, he was very clear about about October 7th. But then he says something, I think this is the quote, some, that is not a license, that should not be a license to dehumanize others. And I have to say, when I saw that, I, I found it going over really crossing the line for Blinken to say something like that. Um, 
I was curious what your reaction was to that. I think that at the end, we are very much appreciate the help that we are getting from the, from the United States of America uh, in many areas, including munition. I know that there is a process to, to, bring, to give Israel even more um, financing aid, which will help us to, to purchase more um, um, interceptors and so on. Uh, what is needed to to be to be uh, bought in America, um, and there are some disagreements, and, and of course everyone is um, uh, bringing to the table his point of view. Um, again, as in, as in with Egypt, it does not surprise me that the situation is judged differently from Washington than from Jerusalem. Just the geography is making the difference. And, but here we are very determined, and I think the Americans know it. I don't know if they agree with it, but they know that we are determined to continue the war till the end of the military capability of Hamas. Every, everything which can be um, um, defined as a military capability of Hamas will be destroyed in the Gaza Strip. And it will take a year. Intensively, we, what would remain in, in Hanunes and then Rafa, and with raids into the area, as we did in the last few weeks in North, uh, in North uh, Gaza, we will do um, in the whole area of Gaza. We will not let anyone to rebuild any military threat against Israel. And we will clean Gaza, it will take, you know, the day after is not today. It's not next month, it's probably in the middle of next year. You think... Um... You know, one last thing, and then I want to switch, is, um, you know, I guess one thing about the ceasefire talks or the pause talks, whatever you call them, you know, I, I guess one one could argue that maybe Hamas could figure, you know, they make an agreement, they don't have to agree that uh, Israel ends the war, but they could rely on the fact maybe that there'll be a lot of pressure on Israel including from the United States, to make any pause a permanent ceasefire. And I know you have said, and by the way, General Eich said this and General Norkut, Israel will finish the job, but there'll be a, you think when you say that, well, maybe I should say, I mean, I'm sure you recognize, you were a national security advisor, there's going to be a lot of pressure on any pause, even if it's, if it's five weeks, it's four weeks, it's eight weeks, from this administration is based on where things stand and what it seems like they want to do to make this permanent. But you think this fact that Israel will withstand that pressure, even if there is a deal, they'll work out, they will go back and finish the job. Um, I, I, I can say what, what I think and what my assessment. Yeah. I think that Israel should not stop. Yeah, I think it will be a huge mistake, an historical mistake to stop the war unless we finish the job of distracting the military capability of Hamas in the whole uh, Gaza area. And Hamas cannot be um, a functioning uh, organization afterwards. We, we have to kill all the leadership and, and, and all the functions which are making it an organization. People will remain, uh, I don't know, um, supporters of the idea. That's okay, we cannot stop so, uh, ideas. Yeah. But capabilities we can and we should. Okay. And there is something which is not my, my assessment, is just to report about the sentiment in Israel. I think that the people of Israel will not let the, any government of Israel to stop the war. Yeah. The, 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 the 90 commanders of battalions signed a call for the prime minister, 90 commanders of reserve battalions. Think about the number. Call and um, call the prime minister not to stop. And these are reservists that should come back to service if if will be a um, continuation of the war. So the and, and the ordinary people, the, the sentiment in Israel is so strong not to stop the war that I don't see it happening. Okay. Let me uh, let me switch gears. We'll come back to how much so we got some questions that I'll mention. But let me let me switch gears for a few minutes. Um, since we last spoke uh, together, uh, there have been these talk of uh, these U.S. has uh, retaliated to some extent, um, you know, for the killing of these three U.S. soldiers. Um, there was one senior, it looked like uh, 
uh, Hezbollah leader in Iraq that was killed. Um, how do you think the Iranians are looking at these attacks, uh, in, especially in conjunction with whatever? Also, Israel has had fewer maybe attacks recently compared to the U.S. in number, but very, you know, have have uh, killed certain senior commanders. And based on reports that I've read, based on what Israel has been doing in Syria and maybe in Lebanon, you have Iranian forces, but I saw some reports that might be withdrawing uh, from Syria, at least some of the senior commanders. I think that what happened between Iran and Iranian proxies and the rest of America is the same mistake that Hamas did. They, they, they don't understand that um, that the um, democracies have a lot of patience and they are not ready, they are not happy trigger systems. But when when the other side, when dictators are crossing red line, the democracy is becoming crazy. I mean, the United States of America will attack in the middle of Baghdad um, and eliminate the commander of, of a proxy of the Iran. I mean, why? Because the Iranians did something that they should not do. They succeeded to kill and to 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 damage the Israel the uh, American um, uh, position. Uh, three uh, soldiers had been killed. Forty had been injured. I mean, it's a huge success. Too much success. And from the American point of view, they, they I think I, I was not surprised by the reaction because I, I thought that the Americans should do something, otherwise they will lose any position in the Middle East. The Middle East uh, understand the language of uh, retaliation. It's part of the, of the culture. Um, and, 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 and by the way, it doesn't connect it at all to the war in, in, in Gaza. The, 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 this proxy is uh, uh, um, bombed the American uh, bases before the war in Gaza and, and will continue after the war in Gaza. It is something which is about the position of the Americans in the Middle East, where, where they are, what they want to achieve, how they are ready to, to pay the prices which are needed to achieve it. Um, and, and here, I think that the Iranians cross red lines that they didn't understand that exist relating to the patience of the, of the United States of America. Do you think that the Iranians view the U.S. and Israel coordinating on this front? Or how do you... Or... I, I don't know. But they should suspect that it is that this is the situation. They, they, sh they look at what we are doing, what Americans are doing, then, and might come to the conclusion that this, these guys are coordinated. But in fact, the Americans have their own area in which we are not uh, active at all, and we are, they are not active in, in Gaza. So practically, it's not needed. But if you ask what, what might be the point, the point of view of the Iranians, and the Iranians must uh, much judge the situation differently. Okay, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, tempted to ask you of your view of uh, how effective the U.S. strikes have been uh, beyond that killing of that one Hezbollah leader in Iraq. But I know you don't like to comment about what the United States is doing. You so I'm not, agree. I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I will. However, I will. I will ask you about uh, one question on the north, uh, the north of Israel. Uh, obviously comes up in all our conversations. It seems like, obviously, Israel, how do you assess the state of play? I think, that the, I, I think that the, 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 the level is higher now. The, the, both sides raise the bar. And both sides are doing actions that in the past they did. We attack in Abatia, which is behind the Litani, uh, they, they they launch rockets into um, into Meron uh, um, headquarters of the IDA of the uh, Air Force and to uh, civilian uh, centers in Israel, including Metula and Kiryat Shmona. Uh, I mean, both sides are raising the bar, but I think that at the same time, both sides are very clear, very very clear in their signals that they don't want that that will be deteriorated to a big war. It's not our interest, it's not their interest. When they see what's happening in Gaza, they understand that there are prices that I'm not sure that Nasrallah is ready to pay. I don't know, but I don't feel sure that he is ready to pay. And for all the signals that we can see are as, as outside the system without the intelligence and so on, it's clear that both sides are very cautious in their reactions. 
So do you think given that uh, the both sides don't want a war, but on the other hand, Israel has an interest, uh, immediate issues, a short-term interest of making the northern part of Israel safe enough so people feel comfortable and those northern towns come back to their houses. Is that just something that's going to have to wait a while? Or do you think that Israel will keep hitting the Hezbollah enough where the, enough of their forces will stay further from the border long enough that uh, the Israelis will feel comfortable going back to the, some of these northern towns? I think that first Israel is giving the Americans and the French the space to achieve it by uh, diplomatic uh, uh, um, dialogues with the um, with the uh, regime in in, uh, in 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 Lebanon. The problem is that the decision is not done by the Lebanese government at all. They, they don't exist. They exist formally. They don't exist practically. And the decision at the end will be done in the combination between the Nasrallah and, and the Iranians. And um, I don't know what will be the decision. I really don't know what will be the decision. What we are doing, and it was declared by the commander of the Air Force, we are preparing the ground. We succeeded to eliminate, for example, part of the anti-missiles um, that, that Hezbollah had. Uh, we succeeded to, to bomb some areas which are part of the preparation, uh, defensive preparations of Hamas, of, uh, of Hezbollah on the ground. So if, if, if Hezbollah is launching its missiles, rockets, um, mostly into civilian um, settlement, and the damage for uh, private uh, houses in, in the north is huge, huge, um, Israel is concentrating almost all its efforts in the military capability of, uh, of Hezbollah to make it easier if it will be uh, a need to go to a war. That we will find a softer uh, line and on the ground. It's not changed the whole situation totally, but slowly, slowly we are succeeding to eroding, in eroding uh, um, part of the capabilities of, of Hezbollah, close to the border. It's not about the, the inside capability, but close to the border. In some points, even a little bit far from the border. Okay. Let me uh, just, I'm just going to ask a few more but, questions. But one, one remark that I should, this is an example how an effect of slippery slope can take part in two minutes. Yeah. A two big success in one side, meaning big failure that the other side will have to retaliate, and you lose control. No, I um, let me. Um, we haven't generally. I don't ask about this, but what is on the West Bank? There've been a lot of um, arrests of Hamas uh, folks. There have been killing. Uh, what's maybe just give it. Update of yes, Israel Israel decided to use the opportunity of the war of the war to you call it mopping up, but to do it very deep. I mean, we we took the refugee camp of Tulkarim. We were there with with a whole brigade sixty hours. We went from one house to another. We killed the uh, members of Hamas. And, uh, today we did it in near a, Tulkarim, even closer to Israel. Uh, the, the result is very clear. First, we succeeded to arrest more than 1,000 people, that half of them are Hamas members in the West Bank. And we killed more than 300, almost all of them, 90%, with weapon in their hands. So um, we are using uh, tools that we hesitated to use in the past, drones, heavy bombs of F-16, if you needed, uh, in few, very few uh, occasions when they went down under buildings in which we knew there is a huge basement. They don't have tunnels, but to move from one building to another in some of the refugee camps, they don't have the ability to produce missiles and so on and so forth. So it's a different uh, threat. From what I heard from one of the commanders on the ground is the number of alarms 
based on intelligence that there are um, uh, cells of Hamas and others preparing operations against Israel was reduced to um, fantastically from our point of view. Um, and, and the success is, is, is very clear, and, and we, we intend to continue to put pressure on Hamas in the West Bank, not to let it, um, to let it uh, raise its head. Let me ask you just a few quick questions we have in the audience, and then we'll conclude. I know, first of all, I want to appreciate, I know it's after midnight in Israel. I know you're more nocturnal, but uh, it's very kind of you to stay up so late. Uh, General, let me ask you uh, just a few quick questions we have. So one one uh, one person asked, he was surprised that Israel would allow the leader of Hamas, uh, I think it was Sinwar's sister or niece, uh, he wasn't sure, uh, to be treated in Israeli hospital. Um, do you have any thoughts you, about you, that? You, you, you come to something that in Israel we are arguing about it all the time. In one side, in the end, we are open society, a democracy, uh, people that had been educated for a thousand years that if you see someone in a need, you help. And here is a woman who is uh, very ill or needed some treatment that they cannot get anywhere else. What well, we can say, uh, no, we will not let you and you lie behind the... I remember when the first um, 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 wounded the Syrians crossed the, the, the uh, defense at the beginning of the, of the uh, um, of civil war in, in Syria, um, that was two weeks after I became the, the national security advisor. And someone said, uh, we gave the IDF strict orders. No one is crossing the, the fence. And I said, guys, you can give what orders you want. I don't see the, the commander, the, 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 the officer in the IDF, which in the other side will be three wounded guys. That he doesn't know if they are in the bad side or the good side, but wounded. It will be clear that they are that he will say, you know what? Die on the other side. It will not happen. We are Jews. We are we are Israelis. This is the education that we get. This is the, the this is the our weaknesses and our strengths. Yeah. People here are arguing, and I'm saying, guys, this is Israel. Yeah. And maybe it's a mistake. I don't feel that morally it's a mistake. I don't know. Maybe tactically it's a mistake. Morally, it's not a mistake. Someone asked a somewhat similar question, a little different, about that the uh, some children of Hamas uh, leaders are living it up in uh, Switzerland, and uh, but I assume family is seen as uh, that's a separate. You don't uh, hold them responsible. No. Uh, the last question. But but if this guy has a, a, a insurance company, don't make business with the leaders in Qatar. Yeah. Right. Uh, one last question. Uh, someone asks, and it's uh, it hasn't come up much. What about the Palestinian Islamic Jihad in all this war in Gaza? It's Israel part of the, it's, from our point of view, it's, it's a one combination that we distract and kill and whatever. Of course, Hamas is I don't know more than ten times um, bigger and, and stronger, but but they are in the same list, the same league, and and we will eliminate them as well. Okay. I'm out of questions. Do you have anything that I should ask that uh, you want to bring up that I didn't ask? That, that um, um, as I said at the, at, at, the, at the middle, to answer the question, we, we, we very much appreciate the relations uh, that we have relating to our needs. Uh, the Pentagon is very open, um, and, and we know that it is issue of policy. No one in America is acting by itself. Um, and we very much appreciate the, the support that we are getting. And at the same time, we have some areas in which we don't agree with the American view. And it's okay from all, you know, it, 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 both uh, democracies, both uh, super um, um, countries with the, which has uh, which have a point of view. And, uh, and between friends, uh, it's better to to know to know the, the point of view of the Americans, and the Americans will will know the point of view of Israel is then too high and too light. Okay. Look, uh, General, thank you very much. Thanks for you staying up so well. late. And uh, I want to thank everyone who joined us and those supporters of Jinsa that joined us. I want to thank them for the support and uh, look forward to seeing you at our at uh, future webinars next week and beyond. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening uh, and bye. good night to you, General. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.